Hey, what is going on YouTube? It's Tech Tactics here, and today we're going to be comparing AMD to Intel. Now, ever since time, basically, humans have been arguing over all sorts of things, whether it be Coke versus Pepsi, Ford versus Chevy, PC versus console, which I actually have a video of on my channel coming up very soon. So if that sounds interesting, definitely go check that out, along with my uh, video of NVIDIA versus AMD. But that's beside the point, because for this video, my goal is to settle the long-going war between Intel and AMD. So if you guys are interested, then definitely please be sure to stay through this intro so you can check out exactly what I have to say between these two CPU brands. Alright, so now that we're back from the intro, let's go ahead and jump right on in. Now to start we're going to be talking with talking about some of the pros on Intel side. So some of the pros would be it has a lot better single core performance. Um, this being the cores are just stronger in general um, on a Intel's rather than AMD's side. So that's something to definitely note as a lot of games are more single core rather than multi core. So if you're going to be doing gaming at first it might seem like Intel is definitely going to be the choice. However, let's go ahead and go through some more of Intel's uh, pros. So the next one would be that it has less heat. Now, this is typically, not always, of course, but to give an example of the higher heat, I went ahead and compared the heat from the, six, the i3 to the FX6300. Now, of course, this is only two, one CPU from each side, but it's just a good idea of just how, in, of how Intel has lower heat. So, the i3 has heat of 62.5, around that of course. It's going to fluctuate depending on your CPU or your case or your cooling. And the FX6300 has heat about 65.3 degrees Celsius. So although it's not a huge difference, it is uh, definitely worth noting. And the 9590 of course will have considerably more heat than the i7. So with that said, that's two pros now. So the third one is going to be that the Intel has more higher end options. Some of the options would be their i7, which yes, they have the 9590 to compete, but the i7 still outperforms it in most cases. Now, the i7 also has the i7 Extreme and the higher end Xeon processors that Intel uh, AMD just has nothing to compete with. So along with that, Intel also typically has a lower TDP. So, some evidence to prove this would be the i3 has a TDP of 44.69, whereas the FX6300 has a TDP of 77.19, 70, sorry, and the 9590 has a TDP of 178, whereas the i7-4790K has a TDP of 71.5. So that is a huge difference when you compare the 9590 to the i7. So, moving on to the next pro of Intel, is it has better gaming performance. Now this is just typically, not always of course, but due to the better single core performance, it will do better at gaming in most cases, because as of right now, not many games actually use more than one or two cores, but we are starting to see developers start to program to allow use with more than that. So in the future, the AMD's extra cores might actually help, but of course we can't say anything about that until we actually see it happen. So moving on to the next or the final pro um, would be that it has Intel has a lot more motherboard options. Now this is from what I've seen and of course the AMD did come out a few years ago whereas the, I, uh, the Intel comes out with a new CPU just about once every year. So pretty much every year Intel is coming out with more motherboards. Um, Whereas the AMD hasn't really come out with any more within the last couple of years. So while searching for a micro ETX motherboard with Crossfire or SLI support, I was only able to find that on AMD side, uh, Intel side. I didn't actually find any on AMD side. So that was a little disappointing and it just goes to show Intel does have a lot more uh, motherboards. So moving on to the cons of Intel. So now that it seemed like I've talked about all the good things and it seems like Intel's the great choice, 
let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that aren't so good. Now, typically, um, it, it has a much higher cost. So let's compare the i5 to the A350 as they're great competitors and you'll find all sorts of people arguing over this. And the in some cases, the A350 can be as much as $70 less than an i5. So they're performing very similar and yet it's still $70 more on the Intel side. So that's not a very good thing as I put it under the cons. Now moving on, um, usually it has worse multi-core performance or multitasking performance because it has a lot less cores. Um, so even though the Intel's better with single-threaded, AMD is usually better with multi-threaded because um, as you see, the FX6300 has six cores and that's only a $100 CPU. In order to get uh, six cores, you're going to have to spend around $400, the i7-5820K. So obviously, um, having extra cores will bump up your multitasking performance. So that's why I put it under a con for Intel. Also, usually you can get higher overclocks on AMD. Now, this isn't something that happens all the time, and this is something that can fluctuate depending on your luck. But usually, I see a lot more people getting higher overclocks on AMD's side, such as the 8350. People can reach past 5 gigahertz. But usually, on the i7 side, you only reach around 4.5, and, and same with the i5, you only reach around 4.5, so 4.5 gigahertz. So, now that I've talked about Intel, let's go ahead and move on to AMD. So some of the pros of AMD would be it has typically a much lower cost. Now this is something I already talked about in the cons of Intel, so we can actually skip right over this. Also, uh, what I already talked about, AMD does have a better multi-core performance. Having more cores, you get more, more better multitasking. With that said, in some cases such as the i7 with only quad, with only four cores, it will beat the FX6300 by a considerable amount, even though it has two less cores. So, moving on to another pro would be typically you can get better overclocks, which is something I already talked about, and this does fluctuate, so this isn't always going to be a con or a pro. It kind of just depends on your luck. So, moving on to another pro is that it's better for games that use a lot of cores. Um, in a lot of cases, like Battlefield, Battlefield is one of the few games that will use a lot of cores, and the FX6300 will typically perform quite a bit better than an i3, and sometimes even around an i5, it honestly depends. So, having the extra cores for that game is good, but not all games are able to use a lot of cores like that. In fact, most can't, and that's why I listed a pro under Intel for better gaming. But, in some cases, AMD also has better gaming on their side too. So it kind of just all depends on what games you're going to be playing. Now moving on to the final pro of AMD is going to be um, with their APUs, they have a lot better graphics, um, integrated graphics. Their APUs have really strong graphics. In some cases, their APUs can actually play Battlefield 4 on about low and still get around 30, 60 frames per second, which is quite impressive because even with an i7 and onboard graphics, you would still not be able to play Battlefield 4 even at low settings, anywhere close to that number of FPS. So their onboard graphics on their AP APUs are actually a lot better than Intel's onboard graphics. Now, let's move on to some of the cons for, in, uh, for AMD. Some of the cons would be that you do typically have less motherboard options, which is something I already talked about as a, a pro for Intel having extra. And another con would be that there's nothing really to compete with the i7 and up, being the 9590 can't compete with the i7 4790K or 4770K, but in a lot of cases the i7 will still win. It kind of just depends on what you're doing with it. But the i7 Extreme and the Intel Xeons um, are definitely going to outperform any AMD right now. So moving on to another con is that lately there hasn't really been any CPUs being made other than the new 8370, 8370E, and just a few refreshes of basically the same exact CPU, and we don't see much of any sort of increase in performance. Whereas Intel, we see a new CPU just about every year with a decent increase in performance over the previous one. It may not be a huge one, but sometimes we do get uh, much, 
much larger increases in performance on Intel's side. But so far we haven't received anything worthy from AMD. But they have said around 2016 they should have a new CPU architecture out, which is definitely something to look forward to if you're on AMD's side. So another con would be that usually it does have worse single core performance, so it might not be as great at gaming um, all the time. With that said, it still would be better for things that use a lot of cores or multitasking or something. But at gaming that is single core performance, a lot of times you'll see better performance on Intel side. So moving on, typically it does have higher heat, which I already showed earlier in this video. And usually it does have a higher TDP, which I also already showed. So with all those things said, um, which, which one you decide to go with is completely up to you. And I just wanted to bring together some facts about Intel and AMD, and I'm sure I missed some, or maybe you guys disagree with a few of the things I said. Definitely leave that in the comment section below, what you guys think of this list, if there's anything you would add or take away from my list. But hopefully with all that said, you guys can finally make a decision, because usually it can be hard to decide which one to go with, as you see a lot of people saying Intel is better, and you see a lot of people saying AMD is better. And... Usually, I'm right in the middle. I'm pretty unbiased. I owned one of each. So, really, I was just trying to bring together a list of things that might help you guys out. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely please be sure to leave a like. And if you're interested in seeing any of my other videos, definitely don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you need any help with anything I said, or helping, or need help picking a processor, just leave it in the comment section below, and I'll answer your questions as soon as possible. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.